Okay. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, this is Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with the Helsin versus Haydn version 2. I'm playing Japan. He's playing the Allies. This is scenario 2. This is the 11th of December, 1941. Turn 4? Turn 5. It's one of those turns. Quick disclaimer before we continue. Um, I'm in an excruciating pain right now. I was playing soccer with my daughter tonight, and I'm pretty sure I pulled or tore my calf muscle. Um, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow, but I can't even walk on it right now, and it's just it's it, it's throbbing. So I should be in bed with this thing elevated with some mice on it, but I'm here at my computer putting in the man hours to give you guys what you need. So um, if I sound like my voice is a little s scratchy or I do you hear any groaning in the background? I probably twisted my leg wrong right now. Anyway, enough about me. Let's see how this turn goes. Here we go. Uh, we captured something. I didn't get a good look at what it was. It kind of blew through fast. Okay, additional landing at Kaviang. Um, hopefully we can take that this turn. I think it might be a bit of an issue. It's wrong. Turn eight. I would love it if we could win there this turn, but I have no idea. All right. So the 016 is now off the coast of Kuching. So that means we've got at least two Dutch subs hanging out here. Because we had the 019 last turn. So that's two. All right. A lot of reactions here, guys. I'm really hoping this means we can line something up. Okay. K15. Another Dutch sub. They're all over us like a cheap suit here in the cell of a sea. Um, looks like a patrol boat kept them pinned down, but nothing came of it other than that. K15 again. Uh, our ASW patrol is engaging. I expect nothing good to come out of this. I doubt we'll hurt it at all. But we're keeping the sub from attacking us. And that's important. So, we didn't hurt it. Hopefully, we scared it off a little bit. Oh. Well, look at this. Uh, this is <laughs> this is a ship out of... Um, I am assuming out of the Philippines here. I'm not sure who's who. Okay. So, one of our patrol boats coming into contact with one of his tankers and his... Uh, whatever that thing is. Oh, yeah, it's an AK cargo ship. It, it's going to get away. I don't have anything there to really deal with it. Okay, so we have the S-36 now hanging out here in the South China Sea. That's one of the Allies' S-boats. I think it's one of the initial ones that they start with anyway, if that's at sea. So, I mean, you know, they're going to be hanging out. Okay. So these are my destroyers. It looks like we've caught up to two retreating ships out of Hong Kong. So I don't think we need to sit here and watch this for long. I'm pretty sure we're going to win this. And we won it. Okay, well, this is what I was looking for. Um, let's hope that these are six torpedo boats versus three of these stupid British destroyers. I would love this to be the, uh, the time we can stop these for good because I'm really sick of them. These, so the, the three CN, the Thanet, and the Scout originated out of Hong Kong at, as early as turn one. Um, they're not particularly good destroyers. They just have four-inch guns. They're not very big. 
uh, but they're fast and they have great experienced crews so that's why they're dangerous see um, they're dangerous because the crews are good so let's see how this ends up I, I honestly don't know I would love these stupid torpedo boats to use their torpedoes let's see hmm. I would call this an even trade all right, so we get one shell hit, one shell hit. Pretty inconclusive. Uh, but what this is doing is running off some ammo and fuel out of these guys. So hopefully my other ships can catch up to them. Ah, okay. Lights out. It's game over now. <laughs> this is a heavy cruiser. Um, and we have a long lance torpedo attack to start it off. So I'm pretty sure... Between these torpedoes and the heavy cruiser getting in the mix, that these guys are done for. Yeah, Chokai ain't playing around. This is really what I was hoping for here, guys. Honestly, I wanted this engagement with the Chokai. If he hits, if those eight-inch guns hit these destroyers, they're they're done for. We'll let this play for a second. Let's see if the um, we'll see if the Chokai can get some hits on here. Six thousand yards. Come on. How do you even miss? There we go. Alright, this is already going the way I want it to go, so. Honestly, best case scenario for what we're trying to do right now. 5,000 yards. How do we miss this? Come on, Chokai. Let's get the big gun to you. Let's let's let this go. Let's see if we, we we get what we need out of this. <laughs> oh man, they get away. Even with the long lance and all that stuff. Yep. So we get a little more damage on the Thanet and the Thracian, but we need to finish them. That's all. <laughs> we got to finish them. Okay, no night bombing right now. Moonlight's pretty bad for it anyway. Okay, check this out. These are some battleships mine, and we are bombarding Wenchow. Why do you ask? Well, I just don't want it to get out of control. Because Wenchow, to me, is a threat. It has a decent-sized garrison. It produces its own supply. It's on time street terrain. If you leave it alone and you let the Chinese build up there, it gets to be very difficult to get them out of there. So I don't want Wen Chao to have a chance to really thrive. So I'm going to try to put it down while I can. Well, <laughs> I didn't exactly get the hits that I was hoping for here. Uh, I was hoping more of that damage would have gone towards the gr the ground troops, but it looks like we just ripped up the base, which kind of sucks because, uh, you know, I'd like to make that my own base someday. But hey, hey, maybe they're disrupted a little bit, yeah? Okay, we're landing at Ocean Island. Okay, this is new. This is Hollandia on Dutch New Guinea. Nothing here is really shocking, guys. I'm just trying to... Oh, to loggy. So I'm not wasting any time. I'm grabbing all this real estate while I can. Cool. 
Okay, you guys motto. <clears throat> Scrabbing these bases. And Lolo Bato. All right, well, no major catastrophes during the nighttime naval phase. So typically that's, to me, that's one of the most dangerous moments in the game every turn because that's when you get really caught off guard. All right, so this is the guy that was leaving out of Guam a few turns ago. I sent these, this light uh, cruiser and these two destroyers after it. And somehow the penguin dodges that. Please don't let them get away. These guys can do 30 knots. This guy can do like 12. There's no way this guy could get away. Realistically. The flank bell on this guy is like 35 knots. There's no way he's getting away. Finish him. There we go. <laughs> it won't take many of those to finish it off. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Let I think we I think we know how this is gonna go, guys. There we go. AM Penguin gets wasted. Looks like the uh Tetsuda did most of the heavy lifting there. So ooh, look at that. Massive explosion. So the penguin got out, got a, didn't get away, and that's what we wanted. Come on, guys, catch up to this. Okay, this is ocean. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. It looks like what happened here then is this guy split off because he's the least damaged of the three. And the other two are probably in an escort task force and limping out of there. So hopefully we can finish this guy easily. Yeah, I... Okay, good. So the Thanet's down. So that means we have the Thracian and the Scout still out there. And hopefully we can catch up to them as well. It looks like we might. Yep. Okay. So these guys are in a lot worse shape than the than it was so we should be able to finish them too i knew that i knew if the chokai could get caught up to these guys that it'd be lights out yeah lights out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. excellent that's the kind of win that i needed this turn shiratsuyu took a, a shell hit during the process there and is on fire but i i'm sure we can recover that safely to saigon and get it patched up but the, night, the, the important thing here is that the, those three British destroyers are neutralized, and now we don't have to worry about them floating around and disrupting all my traffic through the South China Sea. That's what I really want it done. I don't have to worry about that threat now. Everything else, I've got some air cover here at Kuching. I've got other assets to deal with incursions, but these guys were like a loose cannon that had to be dealt with. Okay, so I would say the naval phase has turned... <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay <laughs> um okay the k-15 manages to get a torpedo in on my little amc's i'm pretty sure that's gonna sink but the nice thing here is we he wasted four torpedoes doing it all right that's an acceptable loss to me i've got tons of that oh Look at this. It appears we got some activity at Vavau, and I knew that he would. We'll talk about it more in the analysis, but I had a feeling this was going to be a thing. And the MIGs, the, the MIGs. Let me write that down because that's something that's kind of important. We're going to use a little bit of our intel here to know what's on that. So 11 December 41. Nine ships at Rangoon. 
A.S. Holland? I don't believe that. My, Migs. I'm writing this down. Look at that. I'm sweeping Rangoon and he's not even putting up a fight. Okay, well. So, I have bombers here at Rabal now. I moved them in during the turn. And I'm only using these guys to soften up these guys at Lei and Kadiang. Because I don't have a lot of troops there to actually hurt these guys. So, what is this? Oh! These guys are coming out of... Um, kilogram bomb why are we using 60 kilogram bombs we have torpedoes there well, that's kind of silly they should not be using these guys should be using torpedoes why are they using bombs and not torpedoes <sighs> okay these guys are actually coming out of the Philippines that's what this is So, right off the bat, my entire Takao air mission was cancelled this, this phase. And that's really bad for me. That's the second day in a row where I've had air missions cancelled due to weather out of Takao. That sucks. I'm just going to blow through these pretty quick. My, my only goal here is to slow these troops down. All we're doing is trying to knock him out of move mode. That's it. That was a miss. See how we did no damage to that unit? So that did not, that was not effective. Okay, finally some bombers get in, but these are ones from Pescadors and not from the cow. I needed the cow bombers to go in. Yeah, this. Not what I needed. These are the guys coming out of Canton, it looks like. Inflicting no real damage here. One Ida lost the flak. Hojos always show up late. More bad weather, man. Okay. So it looks like near Georgetown we have this Punjab battalion. And also um, a third SV, SSVF and a 5 14th Battalion as well. So now we know what he's got there. And we also know that at Rangoon, he's got no aircraft that want to fight. Man, my bombing is so ineffective. Pretty disappointing, really. Alright. So, at Georgetown, we have the... The only unit that appears to be left in there is the Penang Fortress. And that's a static unit that can't move. Alright. More hits on Wen Chao. I think it's safe to say they're never going to build forts there ever again. <laughs> okay. Some bombers coming out of a ball to hit Cabin Yank to soften these guys up a bit for um, the attack that's coming. Oh, there's my sweep. Thanks, guys. 
I've consistently had sweeps not going in before the bombers. So that AM phase was pretty pathetic. I'm hoping the PM phase is better. Something just sank right now. All right, there's some ships in the Philippine Sea leaving. Yeah, and Vavau has got some activity. God. Oh, what is with these these sweeps going? Oh, I know why. The weather has cleared at Takao. So that's why the sweep went in in the afternoon. Please, please take torpedoes. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. There we go. I'm, I don't know where all my bombers are at out of, out of Gucci this turn. I have like a hundred bombers there. They're not flying. I'm sending five Bettys up. Alright. So, the Keong sinks, but the, the, the one that's more important, the President Madison, gets away. Just really unimpressed with my air forces right now. They're not getting the job done. Not getting it done. Ah! Cap trap. There's the cap trap, guys. Dang it. Lord only knows where it flew out of. Probably, probably Cheng Shaw. So, these guys are dead. Right, one gets through. All right, so it looks like this is a long-range cap. I would have to assume it's probably coming out of Changsha. One, two, three, four, five. That's about the max range you're going to get. Um, so it looks like we're going to lose at least two Sallies here. Fortunately, I'm sending these guys in in very small packages, so I'm not going to lose a ton of aircraft at one any given time. You know what I mean? But that threat still exists for these cap traps. And when we constantly hit the same people every turn, because I feel like I need to, we do open ourselves up to... Um, we do open ourselves up to that, you know, the possibility of getting caught. All right, so these are guys coming out to Cal, finally. Dropping some bombs. One Sally destroyed by flag. I need a lot more out of Takao than that. None of my bombers that I needed to hit <clears throat> went in. Where's my air? What are my aircraft doing? I had so many aircraft that did not fly this turn. I don't understand it. It's really frustrating to me. I don't know what else to do. They gotta fly. All right, well, we're landing a mill in the bay as well. So that I'd grab that while I could. Mm. Super lackluster performance by our air forces for two to three turns in a row now. Let's hope we have a good land phase because I need something good to happen here. All right, so here's our initial attack on, on Hong Kong. I don't see this going particularly well because our bombers didn't get in there and do anything. So I don't expect this to be a, a first turn win. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it would have been better if our bombers had actually done something. So we trade about even on casualties, but what is good here is that we do reduce the forts down to two. 
and you know and I like this adjusted uh, assault value it's very good for us right um, it's three to one odds which is really what we need here so hopefully a couple more turns we'll have it but boy my bombers really need to perform here and soon okay this base he left undefended so we'll grab this for a discount Okay, this should go fine. Nice, nice. Watch this, watch this. Yes! This is awesome. This is exactly what I needed to happen here. <clears throat> this went perfectly. Okay, so we attacked these troops. We didn't kill them. And they dragged three of my armored units in with them. This is exactly what I needed. Uh, this could not have gone better. And I, per and I did not use all these units in the attack. Half of them sat this out because I didn't want to overwhelm and kill the units outright. I wanted to make them retreat. So this is really good for me. This is what I wanted. And I'm taking credit for planning this attack and not overwhelming these guys doing it. Okay, Victoria Point. This should be a, a blowout. Okay. That usually is a blowout. Okay, turn eight. I think we got this because we, well, yeah, we got it. Cool. That's what I needed. I'm hoping we take this. I'm hoping the bombing softened these guys up, and it did not. Yeah, that didn't go well at all, actually. Hardly any bombers went in there. Alright, we did grab Ocean. This is undefended. And Sarong, uh, this should go fine. Good. Allied shock attack. This should go... Yeah, we got him. What? Huh. Wait. Allied shock attack? Say what? Wait, what? Allied shock attack? The allies shock attacked me? It's, someone explain that one to me. Um, I don't know how this is going to go. Okay, we got it. Well, at least one of these went correctly. Cool, cool. <sighs> well... This could have gone better if my bombers had done what they needed to do, but you know, we're still going to be hung up at Hong Kong for a while because of that. That kind of sucks. If my bombers had flown, we would have probably taken it this turn, but they just didn't. Not much more I can... We'll have to look at it. We'll take a look at the actual air units and the base. We'll look at everything. And maybe between all of us, we can figure out why my bombers are not performing. Uh, I think the Ishikari Maru is a new build ship. So we'll take a look at that one, see what we got. Well, okay. 
I guess I've seen worse, but I've also seen better. Well, this turn was a bit of a mixed bag. Some good and some bad. We'll look at it. Aircraft losses. Another bad day for me. 11 for us, 2 for him. Uh, looks like we lost a total of 5 Sallies of 2 different configurations. 2 Sonyas to Ops, which sucks. 1 Ida, 1 Ann, a Dave, a 0, a P, and then he lost a P40 and a PBY. So. His ops losses have been very low so far, for especially the PBYs. I don't think he's moving them around like I would have been moving them around. That's probably why their ops losses are low. Uh, looking at top pilots, unfortunately, six more dead pilots today. Our pilot casualties for this campaign have been very, very high. Uh, I guess that's kind of standard for the uh, for the Japanese, but man, that's a lot of killed pilots. Army lost points this turn. The Allies went up an additional 42 points. We went up one. So at least that's tracking correctly. Alli uh, ship sunk last turn. Uh, okay turn for us as far as that. We lost this AMC right here. The Atakamaru. But you know what? It's worth one point. The Allies lost the Scout, the Thanet, and the Thracian after we chased them all over the South China Sea for a while. But we finally got them. Looks like we also nailed the Sea Keong, the Penguin down near Menace, this guy Signer Swato over here, and then a couple of these guys also damaged transiting north of Kuching. All right. Oh, well, we're not done. Um, for the turn. We gained an additional 162 points, bringing the allied win ratio down to 4.10. Yeah, that's it. Let's look at the old combat reporter. A lot of stuff in here. How much of it's important, I don't know. So this is actually rather important. Let's talk about this real quick. The I-10 is at Vava'u, and it spotted the Migs, the Migs, the Megs. So I... I think I know what this is. This task force is the one that starts off near... I believe it's... Um, maybe Canton? And it's initially destined for... I think Port Moresby or somewhere... Uh, maybe even just somewhere in Fiji. Yeah, over here, Sabi. So, uh, it's, it's somewhere in here, okay? But what he did was he redirected it... Um, down to Vavau, and here's why. In my last campaign versus him, I discovered this, and thanks to my 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 friend Nomad, rest in peace, my friend. Uh, he told me about this base here. It's a size four. Look at the capacity. You can get the port up to a six, and the air up to a seven. This is the next best thing to, um, you know, Fiji. So this is a good fallback base in case your Japanese players going really hard for Fiji. Vavu you can build up. So I believe he's bringing his ships down here to unload. And I thought that he would because when I met Helson in person in in Washington back in January, um, we were talking about this base and he said, man, that's a really cool base. I never really realized it was that good. So I think he realizes it now and he sent those ships down here. So I estimate there's at least one heavy cruiser in this task force because that's what that task force starts off with. So I'm not going to go after it with much more than just a sub. Hopefully the sub can get something done here. But yeah, I think these are base forces and artillery destined for somewhere else in SOPAC. And he's going to dump them here as a safeguard. Not a bad idea. Okay, let's see. Anything good? We had some engagements near Minato. Manus, we stopped the, uh, the Penguin with a bunch of shell hits. Uh, it looks like we caught up to a couple ships. So he's got ships leaving the Philippines right now. And again, just like last time, he's going to the Philippines this way. And he's also coming down this way near Sarawak. That's new. Last time he went all this way. Now he's splitting the difference. Trying to make it harder for us to hit him. Uh, let's see. We know we have at least two uh, Dutch subs off of Kuching. We finally did catch up, and it took us a couple turn, a couple engagements with the Chokai and friends. Finally, caught up to the Scout and the Thracian, and 
also, previously, I think they kind of got it. Got some damage started by these torpedo boats up here. So, I took a lot of ships. We finally caught up to these three destroyers, and they're dead now. And this is where the Thanet was killed. Right over here. We had a bombardment of Wenchow. And then here's you can see some of the damage that we we're estimating. Unfortunately, not a lot of those shells hit the troops, which was kind of a pain in the butt. I wanted them to hit the troops because that's what the, the important stuff is. But didn't work out. However, um, the base is so jacked up that we can now shift any bombing to the troops in the base and not to the base itself because there's so much damage here. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to repair that anytime soon. So no forts at Wenchow. See, we had a ground. We had a lot of ground attacks that did go our way today. So Victoria Point, Sao So One, Ternate went good. Sarong, Onatoa, Ocean Island, Manakwari, Lei uh, went good. Kaviang did not go good, but I kind of estimated that this would be the case because this base has some of the best troops out there in the uh, Solomons right now. The two first Indi uh, independent company has 90 experience and 90 morale to start. So they're they're not very big, but they have a lot of punching power. So I might need to come in here and bombard these guys next turn. Maybe bomb them a little more to really coerce them into uh, dying. Because I don't want to throw any more troops into Kaviang. Hong Kong did not go particularly well for us. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great either. Reason being is that my bombers from Takao did not fly for the second day in a row, and that really did not help us with the disruption to the Allied troops. However, uh, I do like this adjusted. We knocked down a fort. These casualties are absorbable by us because we have way more troops. So even if we're on parity but taking down forts, even if the, our bombers don't fly, we can keep this up for a couple turns, and we'll probably get in uh, to... I'm thinking if we don't take it next turn... We should hopefully have it in two turns because we'll knock these forts down to zero. We'll get through and just punch a hole through these guys here. And then this was really bizarre. Help me understand this. Um, I thought this was going to be our shock attack. We were supposed to cross the river into here. But for whatever reason, the allies shock attacked. <clears throat> this was the first turn we'd gone in there. So I don't really know unless maybe they were coming in to Sinyang for a shock attack. Or what? I don't know what the heck this was, but we defeated this, and now we can follow up with attacking back. But I, this is, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Tell me. And then, oh, yes, this last good thing that happened here was a very good engagement by our troops at Georgetown. And I'll tell you what the significance of this is. Uh, I had I had all these guys in here, but the bulk of them were set to not attack. I only had a couple SNLFs and one armor unit actually attacking. The rest of these guys were set on pursuit mode. And I wanted them to get into here and pursue. And now we can take Georgetown next turn, which is a big win for me. Because if you look at the road system here, the fastest way down the east, the western peninsula of Malaya is on is through Georgetown and down. And I want to ride this peninsula all the way down into Singapore and drag troops in behind it. So it was important that we won here, and now we're going to take this next turn. Now that also surrounds or cuts off the route of retreat for these troops in Alor Star, which means they can't ever make it down into Singapore. So we cut off about 10,000 troops and killed a bunch more up here with our operation. So obviously that's not going to do us a ton of good because a lot of them are still going to get into Singapore. However, it's not as many as it could have been. We're still going to have to do a ungodly, horrendous shock attack into Singapore and there's going to be heavy losses, but it's really not an option. We must do it. So every, every troop we can prevent from getting in there is better. All right, let me turn that off. Let's finish up here. All right, let's see what we got for amphibious operations. We landed at Tulagi, uh, Onotoa, Ocean Island, Milne Bay, which was a, a pretty bold land grab on my part. I wanted to grab this thing real quick, just so he can't have it. Uh, Lolobato, 
Hollandia and Gasmara. These are all places that we landed this turn with fast transport task forces. For air, not a particularly good day. Bombers did okay hitting Wen Chao. These guys that okay, this is frustrating to me. Look at this. I got almost nothing out of Miri. Not Miri. Kuching this turn. Look at this. Five bombers at a time. Pathetic. And one of them even went in with just bombs, which is such a joke. Let's look at this. I think I figured out why I had no aircraft fly this turn. Ready? Stacking limit. I've exceeded the stacking limit, and it's somehow causing a reduction in sorties by these guys. I didn't think it would be that extreme because look at this. These Bettys here basically didn't fly at all. Ooh. Look at all these guys. I probably should get them out of there, huh? Um, and these guys, only one of these units actually flew, I guess, or did anything. Or it was just five from each, but it was just really ridiculous that uh, we had so few bombers go in. And it must be the stack level. So I'm either going to have to take aircraft out or, or something else because the engineers are taking forever to build up the base. So I guess I'm just going to have to pull some aircraft out. Keep the stacking level under 100 or else we're going to have these half-assed raids again. And I don't want the President of Madison to get out of here. That's a good transport ship. So uh, if he goes this way, he's going to have to run the gauntlet of subs. And if he goes this way, it'll be more of the same. But these guys should be able to stop it next turn. If I make the appropriate adjustments to um, the stacking level here. So that's probably what happened with that. Uh... Yeah, the bombing raids on Hong Kong were kind of ineffective because there wasn't enough big bombs going in. Uh, we did get cap trapped. Let me see if I can find that. It's one of the last ones. We got cap trapped here. Where is it at? Why can't I find it? Oh, I know why. Because it was a sec it was in the afternoon. I had the heck with it. We got cap trapped and here's where they came out of. <laughs> Wasting your time. Sorry. He's got uh P forties from the Philippines here in Changsha. So he's probably got these aircraft scattered all over the place through here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, anyway, sorry. He's got those aircraft scattered over, and we're going to just have to deal with these cap traps until I can get some more fighters in the area to fly escort. I, It is what it is. I have to hit these troops to slow them down from getting on the Anking Road. But we're gonna. there's going to be times where they go in unescorted, and this is one of them. But because the unit was divided up into small pieces, we took relatively few losses with that. Let's see here. Combat Reporter. Uh, second for this turn. We got Chang Shaw, Hen Yang, Lu Chao, Sir Baya, Clark Field, and heavy volume of radio traffic detected at LA. So what I'm hoping that means is that we have a task force forming up and getting ready to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And we do have a sub kind of here ready to pick that up if that's the case. That's really it for Sigint. And then let's just take a look at the arrivals. We got a new ship this turn. The Ishikari Maru at Nagasaki. So let's see what that is. Ishikari Maru. There it is. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a, a decent sized AK with good speed. So that's a good chip to have. And then what else we got in the ops report? I think basically we can just look at the Japanese for a roundup of all the bases that I took again. You can read these off yourself. I won't read them to you. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it in the ops report that I think is worth talking about. So let's go around the map. So in China, we are proceeding down the road here from Changsha. I've got all my units in here now. All but maybe one. Looks like one division's not in there. And that's about it for, for what I got going into that. 
I'm going to start moving down into Lo Yang because it appears that he's pulled out the bulk of his troops. He's just got some light forces there. He is trying to set up on this road to block us, right? Uh, but these guys are going to move in there. I think if we get enough bombers on these guys, we could probably blow them out. And once we blow it out, it's going to be pretty smooth sailing all the way into Sion down this road. So hopefully we can get through here. And if from there, it's just going to get easier as we go. We This is where that weird shock attack occurred. I guess we had dueling shock attacks and his, his happened to go down first. Even though I was trying to get in there myself, so whatever. Uh, we, our forces are moving in and we are looking to encircle this whole pocket of troops over here. I've got these guys meeting these ones here. So I'm going to basically block off uh, this road and this road and bottle all of these guys up into Wenchow. Or this region. But we're going to, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to get into Wenchow before he does. And when we get there, it's going to be, hopefully we can take it. That's all I got to say. It's got a lot of troops, but not a lot of these are particularly good. The base is pretty well jacked up. There's no forts. All he's got is train on his side. But I'm hoping the superior quality of our troops that I'm going to put in here can win the day. And once that's done, we just need to reduce this pocket of troops. And then we reform and start a push in the south. I'd love to get in through here, through Kukong. And work my way up this road and get into Henyang and even maybe uh, Siangtong and just shock attack through here. Look, got a river, so it'd be a shock attack. But we're shocking attack into clear terrain here, so we should be able to really get in behind Changsha and flank these guys and make it untenable for him to stay. That's long term. We're, we're maybe a month away from that operation going down. But step one is reduce Wen Chao, take it. And kill all these Chinese troops and reform and continue up and, and apply pressure in the southern part of China to keep him from overbuilding up up here. Okay. In Burma, uh, I did a do a um, what you call it um, a sweep and the, lo and behold, his fighters are gone. So he is doing maximum Sarabin right here. He's just not looking to fight us. He's probably going to give up Rangoon. And all of Burma, for all for that matter, he's just looking to give it up. Because he's not trying to do anything to stop us. Right? Look, nothing in Mole Mine. Rangoon, these troops are hardly anything. So if anything, it looks like he may be moving some out. This here is some bombers of some unknown dubious quality. I'm guessing they're leftovers coming out of Malaya. And he's just stopping in Tungu on his way up to... I guess Calcutta. So. But I think we're going to have a relatively easy time taking Rangoon at the rate that we're going. He's just not looking to get in there and get in the fight. We haven't spotted any ships coming in. Right? Because he ain't even trying to get his reinforcements in there. I think he realizes it's too dangerous. So uh, I'm hoping to take a nice little walk in the park in Burma and take it. And once we take Rangoon, we cut the Burma Road, which severely cuts down on the amount of supply that can get into China. So once we take that, the other half of this equation is dealing with the fuel coming out of Lanchow. Because this fuel production here feeds Chongqing. And Chongqing is the king of creating supply for China when that, when LOS fails, right? There's a lot of it, light industry sprinkled around here. That's, that's fine, okay? Those produce a little bit of supply, but the big stuff comes out of Chongqing. So if we can cut off the fuel to Chongqing. Their heavy industry ceases to operate once the fuel is expanded. And then if he's not getting the 500 supply a day from the Burma Road here in the Suyang, plus whatever trickles up the Burma Road on its own in, in addition to that, it's going to make our job a little easier in China when they're constantly supply starved. <clears throat> we previously talked about Malaya, but I basically cut off all the troops in Alor Star. And now we can take out Georgetown and continue on down the road. And it should be a pretty quick straight shot. I would love to get into Kuala Lumpur uh, quickly. And from there, um, take a lot of these troops in Kotobaru and rail them down there and reform them and continue the rest of the way into Johor. And then eventually into Singapore. But we're going a little slow, but I'm going to try to pick up the pace here quickly. 
We talked about the issues at Kuching with the um, stacking level. That's got to be the reason why I had so few aircraft flying. And it's not aviation support because we got plenty of that still. But here, these are ships that are leaving Manila. So he's sending some this way, some this way, and the rest are coming this way. So he's got three different lines of advance. I think he understands that hardly any of these will make it out eventually. But if he splits the difference, like these guys in the Philippine Sea, I'll probably never catch up to them. They're going to get away. These guys, iffy, if, the, if I can get these guys to start bombing better, these guys should be kind of screwed as they come through the Sulu Sea. Okay, big issue in the Philippines, however. Look at this. Um, all I have is a, uh, a parachute regiment holding Kabinatuan, and he's moved an armored unit into presumably both uh, Ma uh, Manila and Kabinatuan. I don't know if my armor can get there in time. Okay, I think they can get there if I leave them in move mode. But then I get into Kabinatuan in move mode, and that's no good. Because uh, they're going to be in a wrong op mode to fight this armor if he chooses to attack. So I don't know how that's going to go. I need to sit down and figure out if it's worthwhile for me to go in there in move mode just to get in there. <clears throat> or do we wait? Do we slow down and wait for the main body and then go back in there later on? I don't really know what the right answer is right now. But I do know if we don't do anything, he will attack and wipe out this parachute regiment. So that's something else I have to consider. So, yep, that's that. Uh, another pretty frustrating time out of uh, Monado. We clearly have ships spotted all over the dang place here. But my bombers are really not flying right now, okay? I don't really know why the settings look good. We have torpedoes, see? We even got escort. Bombers are set to attack, but they're not attacking. And I don't like it. And if you look at the base, we don't have stacking issues. And we don't have aviation support issues. So I don't know why my bombers flew so few sorties last turn. But uh, one thing I do see is that we have got at least five Dutch subs in the middle of all of our crap. And on top of that, they sank one of my AMCs last turn. Uh, I guess it was this from this task force here. That was obviously not good. I need to get this AD into uh, Monado to help service ships in this area. But yeah, they had, the Dutch subs are out here in force and causing all kinds of problems. We did take Ternate, Sarong. We landed at Lolobato, so we are cleaning up Mol Molocus really good. These guys are heading into the jungle to deal with these guys. All right. Over here in the Solomons, uh, a little bit better news. We destroyed that penguin over here, right? So I think right now what we're going to do is set these guys to bombard. And we'll set... Oops, no. We'll clear that. And then we're going to set these guys to bombard uh, Kaviang. And then from there we can uh, hopefully loosen that up enough for these guys to take the base on a second run through we didn't take hardly any casualties here as you can see very few actual disabled squads so we should be able to take it with some good bombardment and maybe some aircraft out of uh, uh some of these aircraft out of a ball again we are not restricted we're not having any issues due to stacking level or base admin or even aviation support i think our what's causing some issues here is the fact that the the air capacity is only size 3, which is going to limit their bomb load to the partial bomb load, not the full bomb load. And for a Nell, that's just 202, 250-pound bombs. And it's the same for a Betty. Not very big. Anyway, yeah. Be that as it may, we did take Lei. We're going to have Gizmata. Uh, I'm landing at Buin, which is also known as Shortland Islands next turn. Uh, we're going to have Tulagi and, and, and Denny will be taking that. For whatever reason, we did not attack there. I don't know why, but that's fine. How much supply do we have there? 
Enough. Okay, so we're going to pull these guys back. So let's cancel unload. And have them move back to Tulagi. Where they can unload. And then return the Rebal. But yeah, Tulagi is going to be a forward operating base for me. And I really would like to get that set up and ready to go. We landed at Milne Bay, which is great. We'll take this next turn without any opposition. And then, yeah, we're just going to keep leapfrogging to base to base to base and take as much of this stuff as quickly as possible. I want to secure this right away and be done with it. In the Gilberts, uh, more success here. But again, we're, we're having success with something that <laughs> he's not putting up a fight. And we are very exposed, so it's time to start getting out of here. But we grabbed some bases here, and now basically I'm going to start falling back and just taking dot bases with a single task force and depositing the rest of the troops uh, on Tabatuea. Because in my opinion, Tabatuea is the most important base in the Southern Gilberts because it can be built up to um, a size 4 port or a size 6 airfield. And because it has a native number 1 in the port, right it means that naval support will help here whereas a lot of these other bases that don't have any port capacity at all uh, naval support will not help you there because it's a game bug with the 26b uh, version of the game that i'm playing that's been corrected in the 27b but i'm not using that one so it doesn't do me a lot of good to set up on a on a um a base that i can't yeah utilize to the fullest okay yeah but we grabbed all this stuff and then uh, looking, looking good. We're just going to police up the rest of this. And then we already talked about Vava'u. And we know that this is the task force that I believe came out of Canton Island. We know that there's at least one heavy cruiser there. Possibly a second one if he took some of this other stuff that was moving through this way and combined them. So it is a bit dangerous for me because look at this. I have my armed merchant cruisers here and down here. Just out, out of reach of... Fiji or or these cruisers for now I think I don't want to stick around though I'm gonna start moving towards Numea see if we can catch any ships trying to get in there and I'll have these guys move towards Luganville to block that off just in case he's trying to get into Luganville because I'd like both of those bases at some point and if we can beat him to the punch that'd be great see here anything else uh yeah i'm packing up to move on to another base in the illusions here but that's nothing that exciting yeah and then yep and then that's basically it uh let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see that i'm not that i have not been discussing at some point i do want to put together um well here let me show you hold on okay this is what i've been working on in my leisure time uh, this is actually going to be one of my training documents and so far I've put on a bunch of units that are strictly dedicated to training now this is still a work in progress I haven't quite settled on the final format of this or what all the information I want to include this is just kind of a something I'm starting out with but basically I have it set up on an Excel worksheet so that I can sort and filter so for example if I only want to see IJN training there we go right or if I want to just see what's training, my what actual fighter units I've got, here we are. I love sort and filtering options on, on Excel. Or if I want to see, like, what is the primary skill and what... I would say I want to train fighter pilots, right? What units am I using right now to do so? I can sort it, right? And as you can see, they're not all necessarily going to be um, fighter units. For example, I have these guys at uh, Yokusuka or Yokosuka, these Daves are actually training fighter pilots, even though it's a float plane unit, because I have a lot of float planes right now with the resizing that I've done, and I want to get my naval um, fighter pilot program up to speed quickly, because I'm going to have a lot of zeros here, and I want to make sure I have a nice, healthy pool of carrier pilots for those aircraft. And I will use some of these float planes to accomplish that. Because you can train them on sweep. And they'll get all the way up to a 70 skill. And then you just need to put them into an actual fighter squadron to fly cap. Or at least I think you do. You may actually be able to use your float planes as a cap units as well. 
I haven't gotten that far in my pilot training yet, so I don't know. But either way, I'm working on this thing, and it'll probably take a little while for me to get it going. But that's okay. And then once I have all this data filled out, I can start looking into what fields are really important to me right now. And from there, I can either add or remove comments and things and make this document better. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Do you think this is a good idea or is this just a waste of my time or what? I just know for my own purposes, there's so many squadrons on the map right now. And I sometimes don't realize or remember which one's doing which. And Do they have enough pilots? Are they, off the, are they on the right training? Uh, are we missing aircraft so they're not getting the most out of it? I would like this spreadsheet to help me quickly analyze that even faster than what I can get out of Tracker. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'll show you the finished product when it's done, and you guys can tell me if you like it or not. In the meantime, that's it. I'm going to go uh, lay down, and I'll put some ice on my busted leg. And then tomorrow I'm over to the doctor. I'm pretty sure I did um, tear my calf muscle on my right leg. That's not good, and it really hurts. But whatever. Catch you guys in the next one.